The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth. Glory be to my Lord God Almighty, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth. Number one, who believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, so that in that name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, every knee should bow, either the celestial ones, or the terrestrial ones, or the subterrane ones. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to openly or plainly confess in the time which is going to come that Jesus our Christ our Lord is that in that every knee will bow and Jesus was the name given our Lord at his humiliation. It is at the name that belongs to Jesus where every knee will bow. Every knee will bow in recognition of all that Christ our Lord has done in his exaltation. The word that it is in the, in mean to say, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. In his name, when every knee will bow. And that is what the name which is in the spiritual sphere, the holy element as it were, in which every pair will be offered and every knee will bow, certainly the unbeliever should understand what is the great peace which has been given for us in that name alone. And dear brethren, the creation which render such homage, whether animate or inanimate, whether in heaven or earth or under the earth, will certainly confess to know, to openly proclaim, to agree with someone that the entire universe will agree with God the Father on the testimony which he has given on behalf of his Son in attaining that great glory of Lord God Almighty and the one which we publicly declare every day in these tapes to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that you can have that great peace of Lord God the Father in heaven that peace which has been designed and for the goodwill of mankind which has been sent for us and particularly for the believers in order to understand the mind of spirit through the mind of Christ the mind of spirit is always a life and peace the life that we are enjoying on this earth of this pilgrimage tree and the life that we will be having in the heaven which is of an eternal realm and the enjoyment of the life of the spirit is certainly found in righteousness and in truth so that you can have the great joy dear brethren this peace which has been called for us is of a very great importance in this unique dispensation of the church age the unbelievers who are forsaking it they have not known today is the day of salvation to stand before the Lord in the privacy of their soul and tell that they have to believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and they do not know that the time comes when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the salvation and that time it will be a tough time for them if they have missed the boat dear brethren this intensified stage of the angelic conflict is all about your will and volition it is all about you that you think and if your volition is not according to the mind of Christ to believe upon his gospel to believe upon his word by the reconciliation ministry laid down upon this church age believers that every believer ought to be a reconciler if not he has to be an ambassador for the Lord and do the work of a great evangelical work not by dancing not by miracles not by healings not by tongues not by XYZ methods but by faith alone in Christ alone dear brethren you believe it or not our Lord where he has given for us in order to understand this truth and made us not to break his covenant and to be subjected for him many people are breaking his covenant 
covenant not to become the king of the Lord not to become to be the great ambassador of the Lord not to become in order to know what is the mind of Christ in Ezekiel chapter 17 we do find a great verse which teaches for us from 14 15 and 16 they if they think they can break down the covenant of me how can they certainly be grown up today the covenant of the Lord is been replaced by this miracles healings or tongues or XYZ prosperity and charismatic gospels and certainly not telling them to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to accept to believe our Lord by faith alone in Christ alone but rather they are dancing and telling we will do this we will do that and certainly which is very wrong dear brethren the order of the things have to be in a particular order of the church when king david was dancing that's what they want to count singing to the lord with some with 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 symbols and the harps certainly that dancing of king david was not the way the people they are dancing king david danced in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit but this man today they are not in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit but rather following some rock stars they are dancing and they are telling we are preaching the gospel which is not at all the gospel dear brethren if you don't find on the tv channel in the corner whether it is of a god tv or of any of a music rock star you will certainly not know the difference between the rock songs what they are singing in the realm of the fashion of this world and the word which they have singing for God thinking that they are also doing the same thing dear brethren that is not the order therefore the church of christ ministers they say no music in our churches it leads to emotional ecstasy it leads to gibberishly jumping around dancing along in tongues it leads to the thing pertaining to the blasphemy of the ministry of lord god the holy spirit it leads to that which is not at all in accord with the bible doctrine but what for we are called we are called to be witnesses by the holy manner walk of life your singing and dancing is not but rather our lord says in colossians 3 16 when the word of the lord god almighty is richly indwelling in you then you can make melody in your hearts melody in your hearts in the doctrine that you have learned not this music and you cannot spread forth the gospel in that manner dear brethren the gospel is that what you are in Christ how are you in Christ and what are you exactly in the thinking of Christ because the mind of the spirit is always life and peace and for the believer it is a must have a rebound when he's getting back into the work of Lord God the Holy Spirit he will be renovated to get oriented to that great life which is so unique and the high and holy privileges given for us under the term of Alekhaniketesis in order to stand finally in his word in order to wear the Kratos power to be manifested in the Iskun strength so that the things pertaining to the angelic conflict could be won so that we can win the battle so that we can be under the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and know the purpose of being called in this church age so that we can know that the fruit of the Spirit is all about love joy and peace and the fruit of the Spirit wherewith they have been told for the ministers if they are not in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and if they are in the letter certainly it kills but Spirit gives life and peace the same thing Apostle Paul mentions for us in this mystery doctrine of the church age. This is the mis this is the dispensation of Lord God the Holy Spirit. You cannot call my Lord as Lord until and unless you are being controlled of the Spirit. There's great discourse ever written for us. Every believer ought to know in Romans chapter 8. The greatest discourse which has been ever written by the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for our admonition, for our correction, for our reproof, for our training in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. What is the mind of the Spirit? It is life and peace. And when it has been called to give us that great life of and that great life of eternal one which is already given for us and to enjoy that right now reigning with Christ on this earth. Be aware, Satan should fain away from your ears this news wherewith you are called in the abundance of grace, in the righteousness of outright gifts given to you to reign with Christ in this church age, not in the millennium, in this church age right now till to eternity it goes on every day to reign with Christ, every day. And we want others also to enjoy this fellowship. Therefore, we are telling to you, peace be to peace be to the mankind who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This great peace, when the future will certainly in the heavenlies as well as on the earth or on the subterranean under the earth, will bow down and say, This is my Lord God Jehovah. And certainly they will confess with the open confession to publicly declare so that they could know the august title of God, Yahweh Jehovah. And they say, Jesus Christ is our Lord. 
or in fact even Christ the Lord. And many people have many things again to say when we say Christ the Lord, the three words. And they say Messiah Yahweh. <laughs> and they start one more cult. Because the Lord has not yet come. That's what again they have in their minds to think. Though the Bible is so openly declaring for us. Our Lord was been for us. Our Lord was been ascended and is exalted in his power. And sitting at the right hand of Lord God the Father. Till the enemy could be made his footstool. And many people don't understand these great truths for us. Why? Because they have been easily driven out. Into the humility of their talk. Into the specious discourse of their thinking. And why these things? Because the pastors are not according to the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in training them up. So that being constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, they could be certainly available. Available for what? Available to tell them what is the word, what is the cherishment and nourishment in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Rather than causing them to think that their belly is their God. For such kind of a man, Apostle Paul our Lord through him says that they are once again crucifying him on the cross. Their God is their belly. But our Lord says in Isaiah chapter 11, where was his delight? His delight was in the fear of Jehovah. If we are true believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if we are true pastor, teachers, bona fide, gifted one, rather than kleptes, lestes, mesthotes, or tupas, your delight should be in the fear of Jehovah. And if you don't have the fear of Jehovah, certainly you are not eligible. Because when you are in the fear of Jehovah, you will know not to grieve, not to squelch, not to lie to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And if you are not knowing that you are being not controlled of the spirit and if you are not living in the spirit and if you are not walking in the spirit then there is no way that you can yield the fruit of the spirit neither your ministry can be in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit as even Colossians 129 Apostle Paul quotes the power that works in me and in Ephesians 6 and finally brethren stand in the might of the power of God in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Every believer through the dunamis power have been made kratas. And from kratas, the manifestation of that power through iskun, the strength which we have to show forth. The strength which has to derive from the knowledge of Bible doctrine when we grow up and when we can learn the procedure to worship that great Lord in spirit and in truth. Not just following some pastoral gimmicks. Not just teaching you to be undersubjected for the things pertaining to your legalism, asceticism, mysticism or pious minded thinking and you can think God requires only money from me so better I will go and, and, and make some tithes for him and it is happy with him no, no way, no chance the fear of Jehovah is a must and where does fear comes that fear should originate in your thinking your heart should be clean Heart is the point where it circulates the blood to your entire body. So the fear should originate in your heart so that it should circulate your soul facets and it should circulate your spirit that there is someone who is constantly controlling us. And that someone who is constantly controlling us when we use rebound in the privacy of our priesthood in order to learn his word, in order to be with him, in order to fear and tremble with an undivided heart and serve him with the laying down of our soul to him with a well mind certainly demands rebound because and that one who is in us is the one one controlling blood God, the Holy Spirit. The greatest discourse written in Romans chapter 8 verses 8 and 9. If you have not known that Lord God the Holy Spirit is in you. If he has been not leading you then you are not the sons of God. And if he is leading you then you are sons of God. And number 9 it says if you are not known that Christ indwells in you. And in 2 Corinthians 13 5 we learn. If you have not known to yourselves that Christ is indwelling in you, then you are no more less than a reprobate, useless mind, baseless mind, debaucher mind. A baseless mind which certainly tells Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 7 2, we have not corrupted anyone, we have not defrauded anyone and we have a honest report. Do you know why they become corrupted? Do you know why they become uh, 
the, the pun pertaining to reprobate minds because they have not been taught that in this unique mystery doctrine of the church age which has been given for us in the great realm of dispensation it is none other but the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit operating in us it is none other but the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit this dispensation is nothing but mind of the Spirit which has been revealed for us through the mind of Christ and the mind of Lord God the Holy Spirit takes that which is of mind of Christ and teaches us and trains us up to his work irrespective of your circumstances irrespective of your geographical location irrespective of your XYZ trends which you can blame to be having your ignorances arrogances excuses irrespective of all these things when you have the delight in the fear of Jehovah certainly Lord trains you up when you have the delight in the fear of Jehovah nothing is too short with God, nothing is impossible. With men, it is impossible, but not with God. You desire for the truth, Lord will rise the best preachers of all time. But what do you require? You require the delight to be having in the fear of Jehovah. Your delight should be in the fear of Jehovah, dear brethren. And if you don't have that delight to be having the fear of Jehovah, then certainly you are losing the track. The six ministries of the Spirit mentioned in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2. The Spirit of counsel, wisdom, peace, understanding, knowledge. There is also one more spirit, the spirit of fear. If that same Lord God, the Holy Spirit, indwells in each and every believer at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, baptizing us into that great royal family of God, then you also need to possess those six spirits working in you. And that the one, number one, which should be the delight in the fear of Jehovah. Delight. Do you have a delight to fear in the name of Jehovah? And if you certainly delight to fear in the name of Jehovah, what do you do? You don't grieve, you don't squelch, you don't lie to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But rather, what do you do? You need to grow up to the calling wherewith Christ has called you. In the power of effectual working ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which works in you. Only when you can give the time by understanding that this is not just the dispensation of grace, dispensation of the church age, dispensation of righteousness, dispensation of reconciliation but it is dispensation of Lord God the Holy Spirit and what is the mind of spirit is all about life and peace the kingdom of God is not just eating and drinking does not our Lord say for us that life is more than the meat life is more than the clothes that you can wear for your raiment when our Lord says it is more than the meat, he is referring there for the physical food. That meant to say there is something more and which our Lord has told in Deuteronomy 4, 8, 3, Matthew 4, 4. Man does not live by bread alone but by every word which comes from the mouth of Lord God Almighty. And what does it say? And the kingdom of God is all about the ministry of the Spirit in righteousness. In truth and joy. That is what the two terms we can call mind of the spirit for joy and righteousness for life. And the common term being the result of it is the peace of God. And those who walk according to this rule, what else they require? They require day by day the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, minute by minute the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, second by second, breath by breath, they need to be controlled under the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And how can you do it without using rebound? Do you know what is rebound? In the privacy of your royal priesthood which Lord has bestowed upon us, we confess our sins directly to Lord God the Father. That is what rebound is all about. Rebound is not a gimmick. Rebound is not a trick so that you can do XYZ methods and think that you are getting back into the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit by weeping, by organizing, by XYZ methods. You change your mind, you change your thinking, metanoia, and you align with the approval will of Lord God the Father in heaven approved will of Lord God the Father in heaven before the sight of the Lord his shoal if not the Hades and heaven are so much evident because he has created them how much more will it not be your hearts before the sight of God therefore your heart is the key point your thoughts are the key point there is nothing that could be hidden for you from the, from the eyes of Lord God Almighty. 
when our Lord was selecting Simon the Zealot, he know why he was selecting him. Because he knows his thoughts very well. But today what is happening? People think God can be easily mocked. People think God could be easily deceived. They have forgot to know what they sow that they reap. And with God there is no respecter of persons, dear brethren. No respecter of persons. And they think God could be easily fooled. What does God require? They say, according to such terms and conditions, God requires only my money, only the things pertaining to Him, so that the church could be established, the kingdom could be built. What He will do by establishing a church? If there is no church given a permission from Lord God Almighty in the heaven, Revelation 2 teaches for us. If there is no permission for you taken by that great God, who holds the seven stars and who holds and who really walks among the seven lampstands if there is no permission by God for you to build the church and if you think you are building the church you are great you are really using the, the grace of God in vain in that reality Lord God Almighty doesn't require that which you think it is right in your sight he wants to know what which is approvable which is acceptable in his sight Only that which is approvable and acceptable in his sight is going to take it. And that is not possible if you are not in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, not at all. You may try to do 101 tricks, gimmicks. You may seduce with your evil opinions. Or you may try to gain more by defrauding others. As Apostle Paul tells, we have not corrupted anyone, we have not defrauded anyone. Corrupt in their sense to change their thinking from divine viewpoint and cause them to understand according to own traditions and commandments of men rather than commandments and doctrine of God. In today's evil Christendom, you are going to find many people who are considering it to be the traditions and the commandments of men to be more important than the traditions and commandments of God. Dear brethren, in the sight of God it is only righteousness, not excreta. In order to make sure that you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we shall have a word of prayer and come back and learn what Lord has prepared and kept for us in today's spiritual manner. Because if it is not the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for us to learn, to exert, and at the same time to be changing according to His thinking, and if it is not by His ministry, then nothing can transform us. Father, as we are going to share these things, may Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. The things pertaining to doctrine is so much essential for us in each and every day. Because if you have not been acquainted to look and to understand the covenant of Lord God Almighty which has been given for us and if you think you can abolish his covenant and if you think you can do according to your own thoughts as told in Eskel chapter 17 with the enigma which our Lord communicates for them through the parable of eagle and wine certainly you need to know and to understand that this believer's life has been given to follow his covenant, his commandment, his teachings. And if you think that could be replaced by by the pastoral gimmicks or tricks of this world and say that I am doing the and I am executing the plan of God not to become as a king but rather to be XYZ methods then you can never reign in Christ. Isaiah chapter 32 teaches for us what will be the principal life of a believer on this earth. And Isaiah chapter 32 certainly explains for us about the royal kingship given for us in this church age. The king shall rule in righteousness, the princes shall rule in great judgment. And furthermore, we read the entire chapter, the things that could be easily pertainable to the believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this unique dispensation of the church age. And if he certainly not execute that plan which Lord has created for them, how their widows will be weeping, how the things pertaining to them will be considering. The king is a believing priest. Because of his royal show of priesthood, he can confess his sins. The Holy Roman Empire bought that everything that was considerable for them to be great to 0, 0, 0, 0.00 and it has brought us this great reformation movement and it has given in our hands this great unique Bible of all time. Never it can change. 
though there may be much of changing times in this earth. But the unchanging word is always the same and the same and the same. It will never change. And therefore for this Lord God Almighty, for his mind, every knee will bow whether you believe it or not every knee will bow in the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and it is the bona fide duty of every pastor teacher who has been considered to have this great spiritual gift from the head of the department of the church who is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ imparted by the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in their lives certainly training them up when they are in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit by not grieving it, squelching it, nor lying it but rather prepared continually to be studying the word and to be understanding the truth by cleansing the garbage in their soul certainly trains them up in the truth Causes to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not to be an hypocritical ones, not to break the covenant of God which has been made. You are king only when you write at least once the Bible says Deuteronomy 17 18. Certainly, now the church age believer can be king when he writes starting with the New Testament and goes back to the Old Testament and finishes writing at least Bible once by the age of 25 because his journey should begin by the age of two after his birth. And by the age of 14, he should know the simple doctrines pertaining to the church, pertaining to the pertaining in the Sunday school and Furthermore, he goes on to write from the age of 14 till to the age of 25 at least once the Bible upon his knees. Because by breaching the contract, we cannot attain the things which our Lord has given for us in eternity past. By breaking the contract, you can never, never learn and you can never be what exactly is the sight of God. After a believer, your real battle begins. After salvation, what? You should grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And furthermore, what does it end up? It says for us, this knowledge of Bible doctrine will teach us the fear of Jehovah and you should have the delight in the fear of Jehovah to know the truth. To be obedient for from where you came, to be obedient from where you will go, to be learning in this pilgrimage trip how to witness and honor his word. During the realm of Zechariah, when the two crowns were been made, when they were singing, Blessed be the name of the Lord who comes, the Hosanna, certainly it meant to say, You start your millennium rule right now. But did you know what our Lord said? First, He has to go to the cross, He threw them out. And He told, He has to honor even the Old Testament saints who were there in the past dispensation. He has to honor us, the church age believers' dispensation. And we, the believers, are the only true, real, eternal life holders in Christ. We are so much blessed and that's why we are telling to you even that same blessedness you need to share and for that the great assurance is that every knee shall bow in the heavenlies or in the terrestrial ones or in the subterranean ones that Jesus Christ is our Lord and openly they declare with their mouth that he is the only Lord God Almighty. And that is what we are here to tell to you. That is what here we are to train you up. But what are you doing? Even your life should be an example. If it is not that always, you open up your mouth and talk. Even Zechariah was been made to shut his mouth till the son could be born. And he says, you keep the name as John the Baptist. Then he opens his mouth. In those silent days when he was mouth was shut, you would have certainly been thinking, why I went against God's word? Why I did not believe him? Today, the same thing is with many believers. Mouth has been shut. But in that time when the promise was been given to Elizabeth that she's going to have a son and his name will be the John the Baptist. And when his husband doubted from that time till the boy, boy could be born and they circumcise him and they give him the things pertaining to be named as John the Baptist, when his mouth could open that time, a perfect family example for us. The mind that which was going through Zechariah would have certainly been known. And he would have been thinking why at least he disbelieved, why at least he did not obey the voice of the Lord. Today, many Christians, without knowing the word of the Lord, are being much more dangerous than Zachariah. Their mouth has been totally shut, but their ears and eyes are the thinking of the inner mind has been opened to listen to the truth. How? By their volition, by their will. And in 2 Timothy 2.26, we find 
according to their own will they have been taken into captivity if pre-adventure by God they could change and they could certainly come to know the truth and learn the truth and enjoy the truth is that happening today in our lives at least Zechariah repented till his son could born afterwards he says and gives glory to Jehovah but today you will repent only when you go back to heaven by ignoring this great unique doctrine in the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit you will certainly ignore and you will be repenting to ask ignorance all the bees at Christ but certainly you will believe it or not as the silver will be tested in finding pot gold in the furnace certainly Lord tests you in your heart he tries your righteousness through your hearts he searches your reins as such how much you are there in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit desiring truly to be having the delight in the fear of God how much you are really interesting to learn the word of the Lord how much of time you really want to spare for Lord God Almighty in your day of every day the tithe that you can pay to my Lord is two hours 40 minutes which there is no way you can rob it from him many people are interested and they're happy to tell that they are going to make these things pertaining to money money is never a criteria in the sight of God ministry is not for money dear brother ministry is to honor his word above his name our Lord rejected when they could say Hosanna and they thought the millennium rule could start our Lord put aside asunder and said the millennium rule will come after the cross and what a privilege it is for us to be believers in that great Lord God Almighty who has promised us who has created this world who has created the heaven and the earth and many people have many speculations to think after the rapture of the church will the temple be again built or even in the millennium will there be any temple <laughs> without having proper knowledge of dispensations without having the true bona fide gift of a pastor teacher without being trained under the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit these believers want to go on to speculate whether this is post millennium or mid millennium or a millennium or pre millennium as well and they say it is the Lord's body which he spoke and that will be the temple which is going to reconstruct it <laughs> if that was the matter the Jews wouldn't have had such kind of a faith in the Lord for what the promises they have given the Joseph bones were a monument for them to look and to see the deliverance of God by the faith trust drill certainly the two crowns which have been given through Joshua silver and gold will be for them as a monument in the millennium which will be placed once again in the temple and God words won't change people thoughts will change the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit will be taken out for them and certainly they will be influenced by the old sin nature to think and to talk that these things won't happen after the rapture of the church the suddenness of tribulation you will find false temple which is not true but in the millennium you will find a temple of a millennium one miraculously built by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ then you may ask me how and he could renovate the earth miraculously by the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit can't he build a temple for them when he has made for them to eat from two fish and five loaves of bread and the remaining was been given back for 12 baskets of full can't he do that the people don't believe the word of the Lord they don't believe the doctrine and today the congregation may come to tell we are having in the super fine technology generation and we don't believe all this creationism by word of God we want to look upon the things pertaining to Big Bang Theory we want to look upon the man's life by psychological thinking <laughs> Lord laughs at you do you know why these things pertaining to doctrine will never change the mind of spirit is the same 
the mind of Christ will be the same the voice of God will be the same the word of Lord God Almighty in the form of real in the form of Trinity will be the same it is you who change the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit will be the same every believer being given equal privilege and equal opportunity in order to cherish and nourish in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and to be under the mental ministry of that Lord God the Holy Spirit through the human mentor who has been given this bona fide gift and trained up very well enough in order to recognize what is dispensations in order to understand that this period is a period of exegesis it is not a period of the things pertaining to teach in your translations but rather every pastor teacher should know what is the importance of the original languages of the scriptures and train them up because the dispensation of Lord God the Holy Spirit demands that which has to go to the accuracy of finer smoothness in understanding the word of Lord finer smoothness much more refined than gold it has to be found out much more sweeter than honey it has to be searched if a minister doesn't do this if the pastor teacher doesn't do this then certainly they are corrupting and defrauding you the church there may come many reasons to say we don't have this, we don't have that. But it is a true work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to train you up in the original languages of the scriptures. To give you the importance that which is the for right communication from the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And if you desire for that, Lord is going to send you. If you desire to learn them, Lord is going to teach you. Because every believer has been given equal privilege and equal opportunity. Dear brethren, to tell you an example, while we were studying in our school, everyone had an equal opportunity, but they had different IQs of human realm. And after 20 years later, when we can meet, certainly we found out the one who were of low IQ, well settled in the jobs of a government realm, well settled in their lives and well settled in their things. Than the one who had a higher IQ. Do you mean to say you don't you, you, you are also having the same privilege to do that? You were certainly having the privilege to be having an answer for that. And certainly you would have been much more well settled than then who had a low IQ. You were also given the same eligibility, you were also given the same ability to learn, to do the things. But the one with a lower IQ, what he has done, he was persistent and he grew to become there. But the one who had an higher IQ, what did he thought? He left and he went on to enjoy the world. Now who will be happy after 20 years when they can have a reunion to think about their friends? That may be possible with the things pertaining to the low IQ and high IQ. But when it comes to the spiritual bona fide gift, it has to purely come from the Lord who certainly walks in the seven golden lampstands and who holds the seven golden stars in his hand. It has to come from the head of the department of the church. That supernatural ability given to exhort, being imparted to correct, to reproof, to doctrine, to train them in righteousness. And this will give for every believer to be having equal privilege and equal opportunity with the fear and the delight of the Lord, certainly to train you up or to be trained because this ministry being the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit you cannot be trained if you are not in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and your heart will be refined like that finding pot like that furnace to search to seek to, to diligently be and to be applicable to the Lord and see if there is any idolatrous way in them to be cleansed out Why? Because of this true bona fide gift which has been given for us irrespective of the human IQ of a lower standard or higher standard to certain male believers because it is of a high burden than their work. No matter however good education you may have on this earth pertaining even to the theological seminaries if you don't have this true bona fide gift of a pastor teacher you will never know that the ministry for a minister is in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit not in the letter which kills but rather in the spirit which gives 
life and peace and which is acceptable and admirable in the sight of God. And many people fail to know what Apostle Paul tells for us in Colossians 1.29. Why these things we are teaching to you all. This ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit is purely the dispensation of it. It is the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit that we should know and learn the mind of Christ through the mind of spirit and enjoy the great life and peace which has been given for us in this earth. That great peace when the change gets conflict, change from unrighteousness to righteousness, from unholiness to holiness, from the blaming things of this earth into the unblameable things of Christ. When you get this change, certainly there will be conflict. But we are called for higher life than that. Behooving to be called as saints, which is perfect to be called as an imitators of the dear children of that great Lord God Almighty, that one and the only one dear children to the glory of God wherewith he worked. In Philippians 2.10 what we read, we need to follow the footsteps of him and to be called as a dear children of him. And his work was to teach, to teach, to teach. Though he did the things of the works wherewith they should believe upon him, Many people certainly fail to believe upon him. And these things we know, we learn, we think, we understand. For only one reason in Christ, dear brethren, you believe it or not. Your life is no life without the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And if you are not occupied with the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in order to be occupied with Christ, then the prayer which our Lord prayed for us in John chapter 17, will not yield its fruit. In Colossians 2.19 we learn when you have been thoroughly occupied with the head which is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with proper nourishment through the joints and ligaments the work of the pastor teacher it should certainly cause you to the growing in the growth of God. That means the result of the teaching work of the pastor teacher should make you to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine and to be occupied for you in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to learn more and more about Christ. And therefore we learn from Colossians 1.29 the greatest lesson of all time ever written for us in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit teaching to us what it is he certainly mentions for us in truth. And we find in Colossians 1.29, everywhere Apostle Paul, when he went, he talked about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom. Why it is the work of today, the bona fide gifted pastor teachers to warn and to teach everyone in all wisdom. Because they will be the future Why? And everyone has to be to the range of Telilio, moving from spiritual self-esteem and then to spiritual autonomy and then getting back into spiritual maturity. That is the true work of the true bona fide gifted pastor teacher to train you up. And you have to use in this church age the very specific word exegiomai, John 1.18, in the grace that has been given for us again in grace. Grace, anti-grace of the Greek preposition. The first grace, salvation. The second grace, for us, the mind of Christ. But what is happening today in our pulpit? No emphasis for us to learn about this second grace. No emphasis for us to look upon the great mind of Christ but rather replace that mind of Christ by breaking the covenant of the Lord with the things pertaining to have their occupation with the energy of Egypt. That's what we find in Ezekiel chapter 17, Jeremiah chapter 22. Rather than reigning with God by becoming a king, they want to reign not with God by following the counsel of the world. They went to look upon Babylon. They went to look upon Egypt rather than staying in the things pertaining to God in Babylon. That's what we find the great problem in the book of Jeremiah. 
today rather staying in the mind of Christ many people they are going to look the counsel and the traditions made after the worldly rudiments or the fashion of this world which passeth away today they may come with new technology and they may say they have to believe in the creation by this method by that method tomorrow they will come up to say in another realm that they have to follow this method and that method the fashion of this world will pass away dear brethren but the unchanging word of god will never pass away though the heaven and earth will perish and we are here placed in our minds to learn this divine viewpoint it is our period of examination on this earth god can do everything and anything but he can never transform the doctrine to your soul it is your evolution you have to take it and we are placed here on this earth to take that mind of christ and to put in our soul and spirit and when we depart we should say lord every word i have taken every alphabet i have taken i have been a witness for every word on this earth and that is what the mentor ministry of lord god the holy spirit teaches for us to be a witnesses for his truth and isn't it a great privilege for us to know these things that this unique dispensation has been given for us in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit to rightly honor his word above his name to rightly give number one priority for him than anything else on this earth but people say who have time for the word of god remember after you die you have to go if you are a believer in Christ to heaven your eternal abode is there your polity of privileges are not over here of this earth but they come from heaven a family that is there in the heaven as well as on the earth operating right now reigning with Christ is your work your life is not on this earth of permanency you have to die like the moron pastors who want to reign and tell that resurrection is cloning resurrection is cryonics resurrection is the today's nanotechnology the fashion of this world will pass away dear brother but the delight in the fear of jehovah will stand from eternity to eternity nothing that could be taken out and many people don't understand the simple truths in Christ why not being in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit never they can grow up never they can learn and why the ministers are not able to learn because they are neglecting the doctrine of dispensations and above all they are neglecting the power of lord god the holy spirit which works mightily in them provided they really be in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit in the delight of the fear of god the august title of my lord god almighty yahweh jehovah so why everywhere when apostle paul went he talked about christ warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom because he knew the the burden laid down upon his shoulders he knew the responsibility and the ministry which is working through him the power of lord god the holy spirit and the power of lord god the holy spirit will not cause you to stop for x y z reasons it will train you up it will certainly train you to cleanse the garbage in your soul and certainly prepares you for that great battle in the sight of jehovah and that is what you have been kept here that is what you have been told here that is what you have been trained here to be alive in christ he was unable to do so because christ mighty power was at work within him that is what the head of the department of the church the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher will be mightily working at us if you have this true bona fide gift the time is too short and i'm not able to understand how the pastors are wasting the time to think weekly once is enough for us in the church and i'm not able to understand how they are ignoring to rob tight the time of god not giving to him 2 hours 40 minutes per day to train them up to teach their orientation is to be in the heavenly realm of the polity of privileges in this alakeni ketesu period and they have to be trained to be true witnesses in the royal ambassadorship in the royal kingship for god and how they can take and occupy the place of king to reign 
unless they have capacity capacity will come when you write at least once the bible because the pastors who are there for you when they're not exegeting the word when you write at least once you will be acquainted wow this is there in the word this is there in the word and how i am living for example if you can consider in first timothy 5 10 the 60 years above widow how she has to be what her works are there in her life and if she's below than 60 it is better for us to better for her to wax against my christ to get married because certainly the when the word says the woman if she is a widow below the age of 60 and she can certainly become waxing against or wax vanaton against my Christ then the word of the Lord is right rather than the woman she may think if she is below 60 and she can sustain to be a widow in her mentality she thinks wrong she becomes unruly woman and that's why the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher is never given for a woman to think even to handle his word in the pulpit we can find the first woman in the Garden of Eden adding, deleting and not giving proper reverence to Lord's word. Adding not to touch, deleting Lord God rather than keeping the word Lord God. She said God and followed. And we find a strange discourse in 1 Timothy 5.10 which tells to us she will go to wax one atom against the Christ. And isn't it a great lesson for us to know? When the word says she will go wax vanaton against my Christ, irrespective of her thinking, she will definitely be corrupted. She may think she can stay. But the qualifications given for us in 1 Timothy 5.10 were a widow. It is of a great lesson for us to learn. She has to wash the saints' feet. And that does not necessarily mean but the humbleness in servicing them hospitality for the one who are in need persevering for those to good things and persevering the good works and if she's always following the ideal deeds like Anna the one who she was a widow in the temple of Luke chapter 2 many of the people who are really cherishing and nourishing in this fashion of the world and thinking the lustful patterns of the holes in nature are more important to be fulfilled and call themselves they can have a marriage contract which could be broken and they think they can be widows and if they have not known what the word of the lord tells about true widows in christ certainly they are not living according to the word therefore i say for you all to write so that when the pastor is not teaching to you all according to the mind of christ according to the mind of the spirit according to the voice of lord god Almighty then certainly you will at least read and you will know what are these things which have been given for us you will know what it is to be controlled of the Spirit you will know what is that you are grieving and squelching to the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit you will know what it is to walk and to live in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit you will know what are you in Christ what it is to serve that great Lord with the Spirit and truth and you will know what is the meat wherewith you have been sent to do God's will which is approvable and acceptable in his sight only in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit in his great and unique dispensation of the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit for us given for us I and holy privileges of all time and if you don't know and if you're not knowing yourselves then you're reprobates how many of them they know with your parents what they have to do and how they have to behave with their children and how many of them they know if their children what is the responsibility laid down upon them to be obedient and to be fearful for God's word why they have become reprobates do you know though this mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit given to be indwelt in each and every believer at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone and Satan cannot even have a chance to touch you because you have not known the word that is what the work of the Satan is all about adversary is all about Lucifer is all about not to tell the truth the first priority the strategy or the scheme of satan is to see that you don't believe in the lord and savior jesus christ if ever you believe in the lord and savior jesus christ make sure he doesn't come to know and understand the word of lord that's what the strategy of satan is all about make sure that he doesn't learn make sure he doesn't know he should not come to listen sound doctrine give for them itching ears and they should heap for them those teachers who shall certainly make them not to be obedient for sound doctrine sound doctrine sound doctrine is not our point in the pulpit and not to train them up every day 
Weekly once you keep, monthly once you keep. What the word teaches and what are you practicing in the pulpits? Then why not you will be called as a claptes, thieves, lastes, robbers, misthotes, hired servants, and two paws, arrogant people who don't change according to the mind of Christ. And if you are a minister, it has to be in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which Apostle Paul tells for us in Colossians 1.29. The same thing he tells for us in 2 Corinthians 3.5, what it ought to be a minister of Christ. In the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Today, many people don't love to listen to the word. They want that which the reaching years demand. Dear brethren, it is your life. It is your high and holy privileges to know and to learn the truth. Every believer, individual believer has been made to stand perfect in the presence of Lord God Almighty, not to be blameful. At the same time, you have to show forth your telelia's growth. This unique spiritual life, stage one, spiritual self-esteem, then spiritual autonomy, second stage, then spiritual maturity, the third stage. You have to grow for that. If you are not growing, you cannot blame that and plead ignorance at the judgment seat of Christ to tell, Father, I was not been known, I was been born in this geographical location, I was been there, I was been here. At the Bhima judgment seat of Christ. Lord will say, I have given you the pollution. I have searched your heart. You may try to act hypocritical manner in the terms, in the standards of eyes of men. But when it comes in the eyes of God, everything is naked. And by that time in, he knows everything before you can even think to really have a thought in your mind by copulation. And certainly you think you can have to tell to Lord by this reason and by that reason and devise wickedness in your evil thinking. Even that he knows. How many days more you want to enjoy this earth by such kind of a fellowship it is left to you. How many days more you want to think that this life is worth to have that which is absolutely uncleanliness in all manner and enjoy for your lustful patterns and not keeping your flesh blameless, your soul blameless, your spirit blameless of a human actuated one, the inner one which boy, which has been given for you at the moment of salvation. You can enjoy, you can ignore, you can neglect. That is all left to you dear brother. That is your privacy. That is your evolution. We don't have anything to go against your evolution. But one fine day we all need to answer the judgment seat of Christ. If you have the true bona fide gifted pastor teacher and if you are entering into the pulpits, the mighty power which is at work, an altogether different source of power which energized Apostle Paul will also energize you when they were still breathing of threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. Now it was only the Lord at work within him. Now he was obedient servant, eager to delight his master. Today the world may not love this doctrine, we don't care. We are here eager enough to be obedient servant for the Lord, like an unprofitable slave which is our work to be done for which he has kept us alive. And we knew as per Philippians 1.25, the Lord's servant is immortal until the work of the Lord has been done. And we are here to eagerly do the delight of our master. So the same principle apply only to Paul or does it apply to each one of us? Are we inclined to say that this was very real for Paul, but it is not work for us? Do we think of ourselves as tongue-tied, overly occupied with daily work and not worthy of such a task? Do we sigh about the lack of power in our days? Paul called himself an untrained person in speech, 2 Corinthians 11, 6. He worked with his own hands to support himself, toiling night and day, 2 Thessalonians 3, 8. He spoke of himself as a chief of sinners and also wrote, When I am weak, then I am strong, 2 Corinthians 12, 10. Paul labored more abundantly than all his contemporaries 
contemporaries because of the grace of God that was in him. And certainly it is of a great lesson for us to tell when he was being trained of an untrained person in speech, but he was having the demonstration, manifestation power of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And that what Lord God the Holy Spirit looks in us. Real humility leads to willingly doing what the Lord commands, but it is never an excuse for disobedience. We are to obey and he will work. Let have, let we trust in God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think according to the power that works in us and that power is the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit provided when we are in the fellowship of him living and walking in him and not grieving and squelching nor lying to him he will provide all that we need the time the peace of heart that is what the mind of spirit is all about life and peace and the fruit of the spirit of the kingdom of righteousness which is of love joy and peace at the same time in Romans 14 17 it teaches for us the fruit of the spirit is found in righteousness in truth and above all and the great joy and exactly we can term even in Ephesians 5 9 the light of the spirit if not the pertaining to the fruit of light or the fruit of the spirit which is found in righteousness truth and absolutely the great way of joy and peace he will provide all that we need, the time, the peace of heart, wisdom, the right words and whatever else we need for the task entrusted to us. Whatever else we need for the task entrusted to us. Whatever else we need for the task entrusted to us. Are you aware that you have been given a task entrusted to you? Can you be faithful in little things so that Lord can give to you major things in life? The only faithful one in the bona fide gifted pastor teacher in this unique dispensation of the church age will certainly teach with ice concept, isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation with the true bona fide gift with the doctrine of dispensations because it has been called for him to know and to teach. And he will spare his life as a temporary sacrifice. His life is not of his own. He is working on Lord's word. Every word that he speaks, it will come from the affliction which he has been curtailed on the earth when he was our Lord on this earth. And he is glorifying in that afflictions of Christ. And our Lord said, enough is the evil that you have every day. This intensified stage of the angelic conflict, pulling that true bona fide gifted pastor teacher not to serve with great humility. Giving him all the occasions and reasons and tell, why can't you do this? But the true believer in Christ, who is of having the bona fide gift, certainly comes and serves that great Lord with fear and trembling. Certainly he comes with an undivided heart. Certainly he will come with a good mind, with a well mind, with a good humor, and lays down his soul by daily learning and teaching the word. Every breath is accountable for us. Every deed that we do is accountable for us that everything should be only in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit because our Lord searches our inner thoughts. 1 Samuel 16, 7 tells, you look outward but I look inward. Psalms 9, 7, Psalms 139 teaches for us, search me diligently, O Lord, know me, know my heart, know my anxious thoughts. Jeremiah 11, 20, 17, 10 teaches to us, Lord searches our reins and Lord has chosen Simon the Zealot in Luke 6, 15 for us to know that he has given for him to search. And in 1 Thessalonians 2, 4, our Lord searches our hearts. Revelation 2, 23, our Lord searches our heart and mind of the Spirit is always found as per 1 John 5.14 to understand what is the great calling in Christ wherewith you and I have been chosen. But what are we doing today? Are we teaching the mystery which is great? The mystery of Christ between the church and the assembly? We are from Him. We are not of this ritual. The shadow of the things are to come. But we are not of that beggarly elements nor of the shadow. But we are the body of Christ. And that body of Christ purely demands what? Doctrine. The mind of Christ. And many pastors who are not able to complete the Bible to teach will certainly have a tough time to answer like the widows which has been told for us in 1 Thessalonians 1 Timothy 5.17 to tell especially those who labor in the word and in the doctrine. Where is your labor today as a pastor? Will he be still the Klepteis, Lasteis, Misthotes, or Tupas, or he will be an ideal shepherd? So which way you want to go, you decide. Today the wind is too strong. We shall come back and continue tomorrow.
and we shall continue the things pertaining though it is the third week we have to be tomorrow to learn to understand that every day is accountable every breath is accountable for the true bona fide gifted pastor teacher in training them preparing them up for the royal family of god to be made perfect and complete in every wisdom not according to his own will and energy but according to the work according to the power which works in him mightily to do god's work faithfully because the servant of the lord's life is immortal until his work is been done on this earth with our headboards and with our with our headboard and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life, inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that to believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest man is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest man is to Kerusathon Lagan, herald the word in season out of season, because of the diamond of my witnesses where they have been called. The number one diamond of my witnesses in dwelling trinity, followed by Bible in our hands number two are hearers if there are no hearers they will not worry besides nature the entire angel cost will be witnesses but what is our work our work to be in the power ministry of light get the holy spirit and execute that to make every believer perfect and complete in the sight of god every believer in all wisdom so consider of these things not worry about the softies if there are no hearers do not worry besides nature the entire angel cost will be our witnesses so which way you want to go you decide we shall come back and continue tomorrow but meditate upon these things if you really have the delight in the fear of Jehovah. Father, we are grateful for this great privilege of the gift of the Holy Spirit through the Word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit challenges in these things so that, Lord, Thou alone might be glorified through Your Son as we are being under Him reconciled in Christ. So that, Lord, the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in training us certainly cause You that glory which is given to You in the mystery doctrine before the foundation of the world. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.